So, hi, hello everybody. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. Time couldn't be better for another CSD tutorial. So today I would like to talk about cable simulations. And as in a tutorial, I will start with a blank project and I will try to set up uh, a model which is meaningful, explain a little bit of the of the electromagnetics, what's happening there, but also how the model is built. So let's jump into the action and start with a new template because you should always select a new template or you should always use templates when simulating with CSD Studio. So I go to EMC, EMI, components and choose cables. So that will be my template. And you see already for this, we have a specialized solver for cable modeling, which is based on a transmission line method which is very, very fast. It will not calculate any fields. I won't show you any field plots today, but you will see how fast this solver is and it can deal with really long cables, for example. So starting here, we got our setup. We will start modeling. Um, first of all, I set the frequency to 200 megahertz. As a default, it starts at 100 megahertz, but we want to see a little bit more action. And I draw first now a, a ground plane. So just a rectangle here. The size of the ground plane I will put in manually. It will be basically x minus 1,000, 1,200, so 2 meter long with a width of 40 centimeters. It can have zero thickness. We will make of, made of PFC, PEC. So that's our ground plane. Now I pick the face of the ground plane with F, W for the working coordinate system and transform it five centimeter above the ground plane well I will draw the cables. So the cables will be pretty simple lines first. Let's let's not keep it too complicated. I draw a line. Of course we would like to have it some let's say one meter long. So you see five hundred minus five hundred is one meter long. And I put it a little bit to the side for the crosstalk uh, calculation. So twenty twenty which means we have a two centimeter distance uh, we will have when we draw the second curve. But first we say now cable bundle, we create a cable bundle from the curve. So this is our curve. I create a cable bundle out of it. And this will be a single wire, which we will use as an aggressor when we will calculate the crosstalk to another, another cable. So I add it to the cable bundle. Now it's this one. I can show the real thickness. So this is just a preview where when you saw the thick cable, the reality it got this thickness and now we need to start naming otherwise we will get lost later on so this is the aggressor start so the path of a cable is defined via nodes in between nodes there are segments and then a cable bundle can run through multiple segments that's how let's say the topology of the cable so the second node i call aggressor end and the cable bundle i call aggressor Bundle. The naming is quite important because when you when you have more nodes and they are then numbered just one two three up to twenty, you can get lost easily. That's why I already starting here to name my bundles. Now let's save it first on the as a demo. Replace it. That's fine. And now I draw draw a second curve for our victim line. So I go back to line. Not exactly here, we will do it. So let's start it at minus 500 up to zero. And then we can parameterize this L victim. victim. Okay, that's my second curve. So now you see this is the second curve. Um, it's 60 centimeters long, so we don't cover the full length. And now I need to say, okay, um, another cable bundle, cable bundle from curve, this one, of course. And we put in a, a twisted pair in there. So there is a library of sim simple cables, a simple twisted pair wire. We add it to the bundle and hit OK. And now we rename one more time. So this will be the victim start, victim end. And victim bundle. victim bundle. All right. Here we go. The first thing before even going to ports, also we can do use a so-called impedance calculator. So I select the victim bundle and I go to this impedance calculator. Need to refresh the cross section data. Why cross section? Because the transmission line metal it's all based on cross sections. Um, so that means what is done is that you are solving 2D modes, right? You are um, slicing 
the model in a number of cross sections. You are calculating for every cross section the mode along with the propagation con constant, and then you can assemble everything to get one model of the complete cable. Uh, this one, I don't want to have the aggressor, I want to have the victim bundle. Segment, victim, okay, you selected segment, refresh one more time. Now we should see three conductors. See why three conductors? The two inside the twisted pair wires, or it's TW, and the reference. And what's the reference? The reference will always be the closest metal conductor, which in our case is the ground plane. Now, can for example define a, a mode pattern, for example, to see the differential mode impedance, right? In the differential mode, the, the two conductors of the wire are plus and minus, while the reference is not uh, is not defined, that's why it's put to zero. And then we can calculate this and we will see in navigation three what is the what is the impedance. Uh, so this is the the impedance of the twisted pair wire. So it's around 127 ohm. Uh, at lower frequencies the impedance always goes a little bit up. So this is how you can basically characterize simply the, the cross sections of your cable. So this is the impedance calculator. But now we want to move on. And of course we want to calculate the crosstalk. And for this, what we do is we define so-called cable ports. It's a new concept in CSD 2023, because up to then we were using pins where every conductor of a cable was a pin. But actually I think that at the high frequency range, the port concept is much more meaningful, and that's why we have reworked the whole excitation thing in Cable Studio, and we now allow to define ports, because ports allow you a lot of more flexibility than this approach with the pins. So I need to define cable ports, and we'll keep it first simple, because we just need new cable port to reference. And reference, again, is the closest conductor, right? So for all the ends, for all the conductors we have, and now you see why the naming is important. It's already six ports and it will grow during the day. I define all the ports, okay? And then we can do this transmission line model and we can, for example, take a look at the mesh. Like I said, um, there will be a mesh. And what's the mesh? Mesh is this cross sections and we can do it. So I'm, I'm meshing it with cables. So you see that stuff is, is very, very fast. And now you can see actually what the transmission line method does. It's, give, it's calculating, you see, this is the ground plane and these are the cross sections of our cables. And because it's a twisted pair wire, what it will do is it will segment it along the lengths in, in a number of segments. You see, it's quite a number of segments where the wires run close to each other, where the crosstalk will be calculated. And finally, this one is just the one single wire and it's exactly the section where they are no longer close to each other. So the tool will automatically search for other bundles in the vicinity and see where they can uh, where they can have some crosstalk or not. So that's done automatically and that's exactly what we see here. So basically this is the mesh. These are the cross section at which uh, the coupling and the, will be calculated between the between the wires. And now we want to have some meaningful setup and we move to design studio. We define the set, we define excitation and we define the crosstalk checking. We define everything on the circle. Let me first sort again a little bit. So I put the aggressor and aggressor start here. Victim start, victim start, victim and okay. That's my setup. Now it's much nicer. So for the aggressor, we put a port and we terminate it. So a port is P, P for the port. We want to terminate just simple resistor, so shift R is the resistor, G is ground, then I can add it quickly, and let's say it's just a simple one ohm, so we will have a certain current flowing through this. And on the victim side, if we want to see common mode and differential mode, we need to of course terminate and signal end it. So we terminate it simply shift R, shift R, so 250 ohm terminations, it's not perfectly matched, doesn't matter, ground. So G, G, the same on the other side, shift R, shift R, G, and G. Now comes a trick. We would like to see the common and the differential mode. And for this, we have probes. Standard-wise, a probe, which you define here, you have to first select the net and you click here. This will be a single ended probe, but we don't want to this. So we select the line, we hold uh, control, select the other lines and when two lines are selected and you click on a probe, it will create a differential probe. 
which will measure differential and common mode automatically for you. So one here and one on this side. You can also hit O for observation, which gives you the probe. And then we can define the single ended probes. You see they, they look a little bit different. Uh, so now again, naming. So this is um, cross top end. This one is cross top start. This one is aggressor start. This one is aggressor end. Okay. And now I actually I will do everything in frequency domain with some AC tasks. That's, uh, you could of course now run time domain. You could put in your signals uh, and look at time domain crosstalk, but I, I will stay in frequency domain simply because it gives a, a more information at a glance. So I define an AC task. We go really from mm, one hertz up to 200 megahertz that we have. We add a few more sampling points to have a smooth curve and set it to logarithmic. So if we run it, it should now run. So cable analysis analyzes the geometry, calculates basically the S parameters, single ended and now adds the circuit to it. That's it, it's finished. And we can take a look at the, at the voltages. Ah, and they are zero because I forgot to define the excitation. So let's go, let's define the excitation voltage of, let's say 12 volt, okay? And I call this already AC1. Everything is currently balanced and symmetric. So I call it symmetric. Because that's the thing, right? If you have the, the length of the cable, there are no imbalances. Of course, the twisted pair wire, it, it, it's perfectly round. That's, that, that's what it does. But if you want to add some imbalance, it's always like in the simulation. If you want to add imperfections, you have to add them to the model. Because the model right now, of course, is perfectly straight and it's perfectly rotating. But that's, that's how we have defined it, actually. So let's update one more time. So. Now we see something very nice. So these are the 12 volt input. Let's switch to double logarithmic. Okay, I guess I'll start. At the end, of course, the voltage drops because due to the uh, impedance of the length of the cable. And there is some resonance around 150 megahertz, which comes from the length of the cable. So we can see, take a look, okay. Crosstalk, of course, now as everything is symmetric, the differential crosstalk is pretty low compared to the, compared to the uh, common common mode crosstalk to the wires. But typically, if you think that your differential uh, pair is carrying a, a signal, what we mostly carry is, of course, the differential crosstalk. Because if you have then this running, for example, in an amplifier into a differential amplifier, the common mode will be typically rejected. But the question is of how much of differential crosstalk happens. And that's what we would like to look into. Uh, now, like I said, everything is perfectly symmetric. So let's take a look, for example, what might happen if we make the termination a little bit less symmetric. So for this, I just copy this AC task and I call it uh, imbalanced load. Okay, and then I just take one side and I go from, from 50 ohm on the one side to something like 45 on the one side and update here. And in order to compare it, the nice thing is I can create such a result folder and I just can drag and drop. So let's take this cross dog at the end differential. I drag and drop it here. So this is, and you see the naming will be automatically there. So it's called AC1 symmetric. And I go here, cross dog and diff imbalance load. And you see, now the effect of the imbalance, right? So the crosstalk obviously has increased a lot. Now we went away from everything perfectly, perfectly symmetric to adding a uh, imbalance in the termination. And you see that's a drastic effect. We could, for example, switch to dB or dB microvolt. And you see that here in this frequency range around one megahertz, it's something like um, 80 dB because Previously, everything was perfectly symmetric. Obviously, in your real setup, in your measurement setup, you will never make it everything perfectly symmetric. So adding just a small um, small deviation from the symmetry is important because that gives you a much more 
realistic case. And you, you see now the crosstalk, the differential crosstalk has increased a lot simply because I have changed the uh, because I have changed here from 50 to 45 ohm, make it a little bit less symmetric. But obviously, that's on a circuit where I change the termination. But what happens, and of course, where the 3D simulation is, is strong is what happens when the geometry is no longer symmetric. And that's what we would, what I would like to do. So what we do right now, the victim cable was completely uh, twisted, completely perfect. Now what we will do, we will add two ends at the victim cables, which have a uh, different lengths. It's something like you would untwist your twisted pair and have now two different lengths, some length mismatch, and see how this length mismatch affects the uh, affects the crosstalk. That's a little bit now requires a little bit of modeling. So what I will do is now I keep I draw a line, I draw a first line like this. And we parameterize it. So length, I call it offset. So we go to length offset. So we start at zero and we have a length offset in the one and the other direction. Yeah, exactly. And the length offset will be, let's say we, we start with five millimeters, right? Uh, so where is it? Let's see if it's right defined. Where's the line three? Sorry. Where is my line three? Somehow I missed this. Let's make the length offset longer so we search for our line. Update. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, that's of course wrong. Ah, I need to start with the line three, of course, at the end, and this end has been L victim. So uh, the good thing is you can go back here and the define line. Here was my line. I have to start obviously at the position which is um, L victim because that's the end on the left hand side. L victim plus L offset. Oops always helps to spell it out correctly a victim here we go ah and it has to be also a victim here because that's the position here we go and we would like to move it to the top side not to the bottom side to not have any interference okay that's great that's exactly what we want to have for line three so you see i could go back and repair the line positioning let's make it 10 it's parameterized, I need to update the parameters. So that's a one centimeter going to the right. And now one centimeter, I will draw a one centimeter to the to the front. And then we have something like that. And of course, the uh, the, the mismatch length is like the a square root of this, because this one is 10 long and this one goes 10, or it goes L offset to the front and L offset to the right. So this tiny deviation where it goes to the right, this will be actually the deviation which will generate the imbalance for us. So now I have to draw another curve like we had and we have learned that it has to start at L victim. Actually, there is an autocomplete and it will stop at L victim uh, victim plus L offset but not in the V direction, just straight. Exactly, and you see the length difference between this one and this one will create the will create the imbalance for me. Okay, here we go. Now we have the both and now what I need now, of course, I need to uh, define them as cables. So I choose this one, I choose this curve and we put just a single wire in there. Okay. And we put a single wire to this one, cable bundle from curve, this curve, single wire, this one, this one. Okay, now we have added, defined this two end pieces and now let's, let's name them. So this is, I call it side start, this one is side end. And I call this one straight, straight start, and st 
right end. And this bundle is my side bundle. And this one is the straight bundle. Now, of course, what we need to do, we need to connect the end of the twisted pair wire to this two ends of this of this short sections, right? And this is done by so-called junctions. I mean, first of all, we have to delete the ports because the ports are at this position, but we don't want to have ports at this position. We want to connect the cable at this position to the other ends. So I have to get rid of these ports which were at the victim end, right? That's the one. I hope that's the right one. Where is victim end? Yes. Uh, let me check. Victim end is this one, yeah. So here we need to get rid of the ports. So I go to the cable ports, victim end. You see now the naming is so much important. I delete the one at the victim end. Okay, and I go to these junctions. And at the junctions, it's a similar dialogue like for the ports, but here I can add a short. So what do we need to do? We are at victim end wire one and victim end wire one will be connected to side end, new short, and victim end wire two will be connected to straight start. Victim end to straight start, yes, new short. That's exactly what we need. So now at this point they are connected to the bundle so I don't need any ports there I connect them really now in 3d and I need the ports at this positions right where the ends are so I go to the cable port one more time and I go at uh, you now see this one's called open because nothing is defined on them while this one doesn't have the open tag because they were connected via a junction so this helps you a little bit to find your way around so it's straight end and side end where I need to define the cable ports to the reference. Okay, and that's basically it. We have modified the model. Now, of course, we need to change the schematic, but not that much because you see this is straight end and side end. I just need to, the same way I had the, um, I had this, this termination previously at the end of the twisted pair wire. Now I'll put the termination at the end of the straight segments. So just connect them here. And that's basically everything we need. So we can now duplicate this AC task. We don't need to new a new one. And now let's call it length mismatch. Match. Okay. Remember length offset is one centimeter basically. And here we go. Let's uh, let's simulate this one more time, and we can put this crosstalk and now previously I changed from 50 ohm to 45 ohm. Now I keep everything exactly perfect at the 50 ohm, but I added this length mismatch and you can put it here and that's the crosstalk and diff. That's the one we want to see. Let's compare it to the previous one. Ooh, and you can see, of course, the length mismatch has an influence. It's not as bad in this low frequency range. It's 10 dB still better than when I had the imbalance load, right? So now you can really judge what is the effect of the imbalance on, on, on termination side and the effect of the imbalance on the length side, on the, or the length mismatch. And of course, because it's, um, it's, a, it's everything is parameterized, we can run a parameter sweep. So I define a parameter sweep. I take this length mismatch, put it into the parameter sweep and I define a new sweep. So the L offset, that's the one we want to change on arbitrary points. And let's do it 0.001, basically almost no offset, one millimeter, uh, then, and one, one micrometer. That's 0.01, one millimeter, five millimeter, 10. Okay, maybe 10 we saw, let's increase it a little bit more, 20. Okay, and we are ready to start. And now, of course, it will vary this length of this, of this offset sections and simulate everything for me. So let's see, this shouldn't take long. You see, that, that's the advantage of the transmission line method. It's not a full wave method, which will would need to uh, basically mesh the cross section of the cable. It's a transmission line method, which is perfect for such crosstalk simulations, as long of, of, as of course the distance, as long as the coupling of the cables is not radiated, but it, it's not radiated. We are in a near field of the cables and this what can be very well modeled via a transmission line method. 
So now it's updating everything. It's already default. So that's the longest. And we can now take a look, for example, at this crosstalk. So it's finished. So I'll go again here on crosstalk and diff. And you can nicely see the effect of the length mismatch. So still with, uh, with one millimeter, it's not that bad, but you can see that one, the offset is something like one centimeter or so. You see how big the change is in the crosstalk, right? So this kind of imperfections at the end of the cable, they m actually matter a lot, even if it's a small section. I mean, it's well known, the pigtail effect and that kind of thing. They matter a lot in the crosstalk and that's exactly what you see here and with increasing offset length so now we have the 20 millimeters so that's the longest you see how this affects uh, how how it affects the crosstalk now we could do one last thing actually if you want to reduce the crosstalk you can of course shield so let's go let's go for a shield uh, it now requires again a little bit of modeling so what i will do is i will create a new cable group um so here we go a uh, new cable group and into this cable group i will place my existing twisted pair wire right uh, and add a shield to it so i say a new screen so here's the screen the screen has to be surrounded by dielectrics and they are different models for the screens they are the screen is characterized by a transfer impedance I just take a very simple model where you see, I mean, it's not far away from a twisted pair, uh, from, excuse me, from a braided shield where you see that the transfer impedance increases at the higher frequencies. That's exactly what happens with a, with a braided shield. So let's take this shield and we have put in the, we have put in the twisted pair wire. So you can see here's my cable group and you see, this is a twisted pair indicated by this by this ghost and this is the shield around it i call it let's call it shielded twisted pair wire and now of course i need to put it into the segment with the victim so what we will do we will shield the twisted pair wire and keep these two ends unshielded as they were before but that's probably not too far away from reality. Of course, you can model it in a different way, but now I need to go to the cable bundles and go to the victim bundle, uh, remove the existing unshielded twisted pair, right? Remove cable and add my cable group to shielded twisted pair wire, okay? Now I add it there. And now I need to do a little bit of the, because I, I have removed the unshielded twisted pair. So I need to connect now the shielded twisted pair again over the junctions. It's, it's a new cable. So I have completely deleted the other cable. So I have to go to these junctions. You see the junctions are gone. Uh, the one I had before. So we have to go. Now you see also the screen has been added here, which we didn't have. The screen is a conductor and we will in a second define a port for it. Uh, but first we have to go like this straight and has to go to victim and one. There is a short and uh, oh, sorry, not straight and straight start. Delete this one. So straight start has to go to. You don't need to use this two-sided. You can use also a one-sided view to victim bundle one at the victim end. Yes. And the side start has to go, to, fortunately now you see again the open is gone, has to go to victim end bundle open new shot. That's exactly what we want to have. And now we have to define the cable ports actually. The cable ports, at the side and the straight, the cable ports we can keep as they were, right? We just needed to connect the twisted pair wire to the, to the side sections. But then I need to add also the screens because we will look at the effect of the screen so i add the screen here at the screen here and again a cable port to reference reference remember that's the that's the ground plane down there and we can choose if you want to connect the screen if we want to connect the screen to reference or not it's a very very typical question you hear in emc should i connect the screen or one on two sides and that's exactly what we will check here so let's go back to the schematic. Um, 
Ah, I forgot ports. I forgot the ports at the beginning, at the start of the victim cable. That's of course, they were also deleted because the previous unshielded twisted pair was removed. So we have to go at victim start in the victim bundle and also define cable ports there. Now we have the right number and let's group it a little bit. So victim, the screen, I move the screen down here. Victim start. These are the inner wires and this is the other inner wire. And these are the ends at the small sections and these are the beginnings of the, of the victim wires. So we are ready to go. And now let's uh, take this one, duplicate AC1 screen floating. Low, uh, think that's that it is. So the screen is kept open, so it's floating. Let's simulate this. Obviously, what will happen when the screen floats? It doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, uh, FD voltages, crosstalk, and differential screen floating. Uh, you see, ah, now we have this very long, the problem is we have this very long offset. Let's get rid of this offset because now we see the effect of the offset, right? So let's make this offset short, just 0.1. So we don't see much effect of the offset. We we don't want to see it. We want to see the, ah, whatever. Let's, let's keep it at 20. Why not? Why not? Let's not overdo it. Let's simulate it one more time. So 20 centimeters offset and screen. And this should be the same as actually the length mismatch, the simulation we had before. So length mismatch, screen floating, but I don't know which length mismatch we see here because the parameter now 20. That's a little bit the problem. It should be actually the same because the length mismatch, that's the problem. I'm working a little bit fast. I'm just copying these tasks over each other without having them, uh, I'm changing the schematic, right? And I'm just adding a new task. That's not a right way to work. What you should do, you should basically create for every experiment you are doing your own schematic, but I'm just working too fast. And now I'm running into the problem that I lost a little bit the overview, which results to a see. Ah, this one is the cross talk and diff with a length of 20. It's fortunately still saved here. Let me copy it to a new result folder. That's better. Now I copy it manually. So this one is the without a screen with a length of 20. And now here I have cross tongue add diff with a length of 20 with the screen and we can compare them. Like I said, there's almost no difference between them. That's exactly what I would have expected. There's maybe some some values here, which I think might be due to a little bit of accuracy, wouldn't maybe increase the accuracy. But overall, a floating screen just doesn't do anything. That's what that's what we see here. So let's now start taking the screen and ground it on one side. Okay. Then I go into the schematic. I just add a ground with G to the screen on one side and rerun it. So what happens here? Now again, cross stock and diff, this one. Oh, I don't see a change. I was expecting that I should see a change at the low frequencies. Interesting. Let's first ground the screen on both sides. to see if we see the effect. Actually, when I tried it before, I saw the right results. I made something wrong, probably. No, I didn't do much wrong. The problem is what we see exactly here is that the coupling is completely governed by this end sections. That's because they are at 20 centimeters. So you can see the screen doesn't do anything because the end sections are unscreened. 
So what I really now need to do, it's a, it's a very good, uh, <laughs> a good teaching point right here. I made something wrong and you can see that the behavior of the cable is completely governed by this L offset of 20. Now I set this L offset of 0 0.01 and let's redo this one more time. And I go here, let, I get rid of this no screen. Let's just look at the results of the screen. And okay, we do screen floating. Update this. So that's now, now you can see that's very often the case and very often forgotten by people that sometimes the very short ends of the cables have the strongest effect of your cable performance and this long shield doesn't matter that much. So now this is the floating. Now we do the one side. And now this, this end sections are very, very short. They should not play a role. Now it's one side and now we do two sides. Update it one more time. So, and now let's be surprised. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So, perfect. Now you see how this end sections affected everything. Now the end sections are gone. And let's look just below the resonance, right? So what you can see, that's exactly what people will teach you. When you screen, when you shot the screen on one side, it will only work in the low frequency range. It's a very common thing for audio because you look one kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, the screen works well for audio frequency. It doesn't do anything above. It even gets worse. Where well, this is the screen floating, as we learned, it doesn't do anything. And this is now the screen shielded on both sides. And now you see the effect. We could switch to dB microvolt. You could see the effect of, of the screens here at the 10 megahertz. You, you, you see a huge improvement when the screen is grounded on two sides. It's minus 30 to the floating screen at 60 dB effect of the screen. So that's exactly what it should do. So even I made this mistake with this with this length section, it's a very important lesson. You see that the short length sections that I had in DM, which were unshielded and causing this imbalance, had a much stronger effect. You basically could get rid of all the shield because of this end section. That is very important. That's what the, uh, the, the transition from the cable to the connector is one of the crucial key points in building uh, EMC proof setup of cables. And that's exactly what you can see in the simulation. And now you also see that, that my results agree very well with what is common knowledge in EMC that at higher frequencies, you need to uh, connect the screen to ground on both sides. That's exactly what I did here. So quite nice results. And I hope you have enjoyed this. It's uh, almost 40 minutes of presentations, a lot of cable simulation which common knowledge from EMC, but you can see how quickly you can analyze these things with a software tool and of course the strengths of running parameter sweeps and analyzing what you are getting. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, have a nice day and bye bye.